Amen. All right, uh, real quick, I, I did talk to uh, Miss Doris Peace uh, yesterday. She's doing a lot better. Uh, she's back. Back. Uh, she is in Clarksville, Georgia, with her uh, uh, her niece, and uh, really getting a lot of good care. She was in a nursing home, got down to about 80 pounds, couldn't walk. And she still can't walk that much. But if her if her niece did not come get her, uh, she may not be here today. She wasn't getting good care, so uh, she's really doing a lot better now. So keep her. Just keep Miss Doris in your prayers, if you will. All right. Uh, last week we talked a little bit about the millennium. Uh, and Christ uh, rule on earth uh, and <clears throat> went through uh, quite a bit of scripture uh, over that and took a look at what the millennial reign is going to be like and as I mentioned to you last week as we studied through 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel looking at how that political shift happened um, from, from God and the judges uh, to wanting a king uh, we were able to see uh, how detrimental that was uh, to Israel and how we're still dealing with those things today. And the millennial reign of Christ is going to be that time where Jesus Christ is going to reign uh, from Jerusalem with an iron scepter. Um, and for a thousand years we're going to have perfect government uh, in the way that we always uh, should have had it. And, and uh, it's going to be a, a wonderful time. Uh, it's going to be after that great tribulation has taken place. Uh, and the uh, Antichrist and the false prophet are going to be uh, thrown away. Satan's going to be locked up for that period of time. Um, and, <clears throat> and we're going to be reigning with Christ, uh, those of us that are caught up in the rapture and those that had passed away uh, previously. Uh, the tribulation saints uh, will be there as well. So, you weren't able to be here last week. We have that recorded. You can take a look at it. Uh, but tonight, we're going to explore the question, uh, who are the people of God? And I want to look at a couple of verses of Scripture here before we get down uh, to the question. In Exodus chapter 6, verse 7, it says, I will take you to be what? My people. My people. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, and, and take you to be my people, and I, will add, and I will be your God, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God, who has brought you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. In 2 Samuel chapter 14, verse 13, which we read before, uh, so the woman said, Why then have you devised a thing like this against the people of God? When the king says this, does he not convict himself? For the king has not brought back his banished son. And Isaiah 51 verse 16 says, And I have put my words in your mouth and covered you in the shadow of my hand, established, establishing the heavens and laying the foundations of the earth and saying to Zion, You are my people. And Hebrews 4 9 there remains then a Sabbath rest for whom? The people of God. So I would imagine you're looking at Old Testament uh, verses going back to Exodus, going to 2 Samuel, to Isaiah, to Hebrews in the New Testament. And we're referring, you, you see that the scripture is referring to the people of God, God's people, you know, uh, in, in this way. It's very important for us to be able to understand who these people are. So who are they? Who are these verses referring to? Okay, what did you say? Okay, uh, to, to the Jews. Um, who are, let's put it this way. I think we all kind of know what Linda just said. So who are the, the possible people that, the, that, these, that these verses could be uh, talking about? Number one, the Jews. Who else? The Gentiles, but specifically the Gentiles that would be saved, right? Anybody else? Well, Christians would be pretty much a Gentile. Huh? huh? Born again Jews and Gentiles, yes. It's talking about the nation of Israel, all right? The, the, the nation as itself, and it'll talk about that broadly. The Jews specifically uh, as a people, uh, and, and Christians, you know, Gentiles that would have been uh, uh, saved. Um, so nationally, uh, you, you see the Bible sometimes refer to uh, all of Israel as the people of God. Um, but, and it's really important for us to understand the complexity of this subject because you will read the Bible and people make mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake in reading the Bible and taking the verses out of context when you don't know who it's talking about. The Bible as a book is written 
uh, up of several different genres of literature. It has narrative form that we see like in Genesis and whatnot. Then you have poetry. Um, you have apocalyptic literature in Daniel and Revelation. Uh, then you have letters uh, that we see uh, in the epistles that Paul wrote uh, and, and John, Peter, and, uh, and well, the apocalyptic and the, and the prophetic uh, li literature as well. So there's all different types. And then within those different books, there's metaphors and, a fig and all these different figures of speech and whatnot. You have to be careful that you're taking things in the proper context. And I know, and I should have listed them, but I didn't figure I'd have time, uh, at how many coffee mugs have scripture on them that people use uh, to really just lift them up and it ain't talking about them. It's talking specifically something for the Jews. <laughs> yeah, uh, and, yeah, and 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 so there are promises in the Bible that are not applied to you and I that are not Jews. They're applied to God's chosen people. Um, when we talk about getting the land back, we mentioned that on last week uh, and how the millennium is going to be. That was a promise that God made uh, to the seed of Abraham, to that nation, that they would be uh, a nation they that had this land. You and I aren't promised any, any land. Yeah, that is a promise to God. Even there's many, many other uh, uh, Bible prophecy uh, and, and eschatological uh, promises that are going to come to fruition that are specifically targeted to the Jews. The 144,000 witnesses that are going to go out in Revelation, they are going and targeting who? Only a Jew. Not going to be coming to Gentiles. Going to specifically be going out there uh, for Jews. So you've got to be able to read in here and say, well, all right, is this talking about the nation of Israel broadly? the people that are descendants of Abraham, or are, and, and, and you figure out which one of those two it is, and then you have to ask yourself, does that Old Testament scripture that we just read have applicability to you and I today, obviously as born-again uh, Christians? So, um, most of the Bible uh, is referring to the Jews when it says God's people and my people, especially when you're reading in the, New Te in the Old Testament, wasn't any such thing uh, as Christians until the New Testament, so it's talking about Jews uh, when it reads that. So, uh, in Romans 11, though, let's take a look, and uh, Linda mentioned this a little bit, how do we play in uh, as people that are Gentiles, which is non-Jews, uh, how do we play into this? And we're only going to read a particular couple of verses here, but really all of chapter 11, uh, or at least the latter half of chapter 11 of Romans is good for you to study. But we're going to look at verses 17 through 21 tonight. It says, if some of the branches have been broken off, and you, now I want to be clear to you real quick, he's addressing specifically Gentiles here, all right, uh, when you read this. So when he says, and you, he is talking about Gentiles. Uh, and you, though a wild olive shoot, have been grafted in among the others and now share in the nourishing sap from the olive root. Do not consider yourselves to be superior to those other branches. If you do, consider this. You do not support the root, but the root supports you. You will say then, branches were broken off so that I could be grafted in. Granted, but they were broken off because of unbelief. And you stand by faith. Do not be arrogant, but tremble. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. So, uh, throw that picture up there for me, Joe. What this scripture is talking about here, and it's given this analogy for us uh, in Jesus, I mean Paul, excuse me, uh, is talking uh, here to the, to, to the folks, and, and, he's, and he's writing this letter uh, to these Roman Christians and uh, he's, he's, he's trying to get them, and these Gentiles, he's trying to get them to understand how did they get to be a part of the, the God's chosen people. And he's reminding them that the Jews were God's chosen people. They are God's chosen people. They've not been replaced. Um, but they were cut off because of their unbelief. Um, and so, if you know anything about cultivation, uh, and especially when it comes to being an olive tree, olive trees have a tremendous amount of shoots that will spring up uh, all around them. 
Um, <clears throat> and, and you have to constantly cut those off, prune them, cut back the limbs and whatnot. They're a very high maintenance tree in order to produce the crop that they need to produce. So it takes a tremendous amount of pruning. We see fig trees and olive trees uh, and all of that being used in symbolism in the Bible all the time. But what you would do, uh, if you go and you want to cut off a branch or you cut the whole tree down, you do what's, uh, this is one way uh, this uh, depicted here. You would take uh, that still live uh, uh, stump uh, or either the part of the branch uh, that you can cut it back to, split it, take those shoots uh, that, that may come up and you can cut them. You stick them down in there, wrap it up, and then uh, th those things will grow together and, and, and you'll, you'll have a new branch coming here in a little while. Uh, so it's a real good picture of our adoption by God into his chosen people. How were we able to be grafted in? What had to happen first? Think about the think about the, the tree limb, huh? Some had to go. Something had to be cut. All right? And Paul is reminding uh, the people here in verse 18. He says, Do not be arrogant towards the branches. If you are, remember, it is not you who support the root, but the root that supports you. And he, and he even goes in verse 19, and he says, Look, you may say, you know, uh, the branches were broken off that I could be grafted in. And that, that did happen. Those people, the, the, the Jews were cut off for God. Why, why haven't the whole Jews, uh, the whole population of Jews come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ right now? Because he has absolutely turned them over, basically, uh, so that they're not going to be believing right now. There's a time coming they will. Uh, it's not that the whole population of the Jews, that there aren't some people that can convert, but God has made it ridiculously hard uh, for them because as we know, even for us, God can turn you over, as it says, to a reprobate mind if you continue to, uh, to, to go against him. The Jews are, are kind of getting a punishment right now for their unbelief. They've been cut off. They are not cut off from the and people of God, but the, what were the Jews, why did he go and, and have a people? Why not just have all people? Why was he specifically going for a group of people that he called his own? What was God's purpose? To have a Messiah to come from those people. To have a Messiah to come from them? Sure, okay. What, what did y'all, hold on one second, what did y'all ride to church at today? A, a, some form of a vehicle. Probably, right? You had a vehicle. Well, that's what God was wanting. He wanted a people. I am. I'm, I had to talk over you sometimes. But you have, you have, you, you have a, because you're asking all the questions before we, before we get to the end. But he had a vehicle. And, the, and God's, the chosen people, the Jews, they were the vehicle that he selected and said, these are the people that I want the Messiah to come from, as Linda said, but they were going to be the ones that were going to be the missionaries to evangelize the entire world. Okay, uh, to, to absolutely build the church. It was never that the Jews were going to be the only ones that ever got salvation and they ever made it to heaven. Absolutely not. The Bible tells us there's no difference between Jew and Gentile, um, but they were going to be the vehicle that was supposed to spread it around the world. What were you going to say? But still, what quality did the Jews possess that made God want them as his vehicle? I, I, I don't know. You know, I can't, I can't tell you why, why he, because who did he choose? It was, it was Abraham that started. I mean, Jews are descendants uh, by, by nature. They're descendants of Abraham. Um, and, and so when you look at Abraham and you look at his faith, it wasn't that God chose a people because there wasn't a people yet. He chose Abraham. And, and Abraham had a lot of good qualities, but he come from a pagan household and, uh, and, and it's not very clear to us. God seen something, saw something within Abraham and said, this is the man I want to bless. And from him, he was going to build his people. Uh, so that's why Abraham's number one in Hebrews 11 in the hall of faith. Because he's, he, he, and we were able to see what he did with Isaac, that he was a fantastic man of God. Uh, 
But God, God has this people come from Abraham to be the vehicle. Now, they, 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 they were doing okay. You know, uh, they, they were doing okay. When we were, were able to see their story from the beginning of Abraham uh, and, and then as he had his children, and look at all the issues. And what did the Jews ultimately do that caused them to be cut off? And I understand they rejected the Messiah. I understand that. What did they do that really caused them to have to be replaced? And I, and I, and let me, oh, I shouldn't have used that word. I don't believe that the church has replaced the Jews because we haven't. But God had God has sat them aside for a minute, and He's currently using another vehicle. But that, that we have not replaced them forever. I'm, I'm going to say that clearly later. Uh, but they were disobedient, sure. But but they were worshiping other gods. Remember, God chose the people. He He selected a people to be the vehicle to take salvation to the world. Did the Jews do that? No, what did they do? It was just for them. Ah. Everything kept, b- began to, they began to look internally. If you were not, if, if you were not somebody who met their mold, whoop, out, no, not you, not you, not you. The, the Samaritans, the, they, 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 cut, they cut them off. Uh, anybody, they were not trying to evangelize. They were holding everything within themselves. And they were making it this exclusive club that you had to be born, basically, to, ha- to, to be a chosen person of God. That's never what he taught. That's never what God told them to go out and do. But they increasingly, over the years, were being disobedient. They were worshiping other gods. They were making all these mistakes. And when it comes to evangelizing the world, they didn't see any need to because you wasn't born a Jew. Well, you don't really have a chance. They began to see things totally wrong. So, just like if we don't praise God, what will he do? No human being praises God. What will he do? Get the stones to cry out. He will be praised. His, there is, even though he uses us as vehicles sometimes, he does not require us. And that's where the Jews made the mistake. They were kind of getting into, well, yeah, getting a little high position. We are the chosen people. But when you call people the chosen people, I mean, you know, <laughs> you start saying, I'm the chosen one, I'm probably going to get a little arrogant, you know, and they did. So, again, God pruned them back for a little bit, and then the Gentiles uh, were grafted in. So, but he, and in this he's saying, now, Gentiles, Paul is making sure, now Gentiles, do not get hot-headed. Don't sit here and look and say, ah, oh, Jews, look at them, <laughs> it's our time now, baby. You know, y'all couldn't do it, and we're doing it now, and all that. He says, because look, if he'll cut off the natural branches, what will he do to those that are just grafted in? Oh, he'll cut them off very quickly. You know, so he said, stay in your lane and be thankful that you had that kind of grace. And it's not that we were ever going to be denied salvation. That's not what we're grateful for. God is using the Gentiles now and has been for thousands of years to take the gospel to the world. He parked the Jews. He did not destroy them. He parked them. And he's using the Gentiles to take it. What an honor. What an honor that it is. And we got here, yes, because of their unbelief. That's not a, that's not a great way to have gotten here. That's a sad situation uh, for them. But God promises the Jews in this very chapter and in this very book that there will always be a remnant in Israel. There will always be uh, a, a group of Jews that are going to recognize uh, you know, God, recognize uh, the Messiah, uh, and he's going to do a whole lot of things in the end times that are going to be to reach out to the Jews and to bring them. They will hold a special place in his heart um, as the natural branches. And if you wanted to say, what well, does God have favorites? Yeah. The Jews are his favorites, all right? Um, <clears throat> and that he chose them, but he doesn't see us in any different uh, value, but we're going to see him pursue them in, in tremendous ways. In verses 22 to 24, it says, uh, Note then the kindness 
and the severity of God. Severity towards those who have fallen, but God's kindness to you, provided you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you too will be cut off. And even they, if they, had, if they do not continue in their unbelief, will be grafted in. For God has the power to graft them in again. You hear that? He cut them off. And what is he saying? They'll, the door is always open. He has the power to graft them right back in uh, uh, to, to the root. And it says, For if you were cut off from what is by nature a wild olive tree and grafted contrary to nature into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these and natural branches be grafted back into their own olive tree? So he's saying there, hey, understand that they have, they have a wonderful place. And, the, the, and so what, when we read that, should we, be, should, be, should we be really trying to uh, evangelize the Jews? Yes. Absolutely. I mean, we're supposed to be doing that for everybody, but we're talking about people that, that we ought to have a special place in our hearts for them, a special, like you have for your children. You know, your, 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 your children get sick or something like that. You're, you're, not, you're not really sure about their salvation. And your heart begins to bleed in a major way, more than it would be if it was somebody else's kid. You understand what I mean? That's about as close as how we should be thinking about the Jews because of where we are today and how God is using us today uh, because of what they've done. That he has elevated us to a status that we never were supposed to be at uh, right now, using us in this way. Uh, and it's not for us to be arrogant. We should be humbled. Uh, and we really should be our hearts pouring out to them uh, and for them uh, because if there's anybody on the face of the planet that ought to be out proclaiming Jesus Christ, it's the Jews. You know? uh, they should be. Uh, and they have, they have 90% of the beliefs that you and I have. They just stop at that New Testament uh, and they don't get that. They're 10% there. Should be a lot easier. There are barriers that God has placed in, uh, as I said earlier, uh, for them to, for the whole nation to come back to uh, to Christ right now. But we should be uh, talking to them. Jews do not make it to heaven because they're Jews. I want to be clear about it. Jews do not make it to heaven because they are Jews. There is not a special track to heaven for Jews and one for the rest of us. We all go by the same way. And if they don't proclaim Jesus Christ, then they bust hell wide open in the same way we do. The, the prophecies that are out there and about Israel being saved uh, and about there being that remnant is really talking about the nation, the, the, the people as an ethnic group. There will always be an ethnic group of actual lineage you know, Jews that will come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ in the end. But the Jews that are dying right now don't have a second chance, just like you and I don't have a second chance later. They need the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ in the same way. So even though they're part, they, they are the chosen people, uh, they do not get a special ticket. Um, they're just going to get special intensity uh, from God. Now, uh, <clears throat> The Gentiles being God's people, we talked about us being grafted in. I want us to look at Romans 9, uh, verses 6, 7, and 8. Uh, and this will, will explain a little bit of this to us. But it is not as though the word of God has failed. For not all who are descended from Israel, what? Mm. So not all people that are Abraham's direct descendants are in Israel. Israel, okay, and he's, and he's talking about this kind of uh, symbolically. And not all are children of Abraham because they are his offspring, but through Isaac shall your offspring be named. This means that it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted as offspring. So if you want to be a part of the Abrahamic covenant, if you want to be a part of God's chosen people when it comes to being a part of the bride of Christ, to be a part of the saved group of people, now what do you have to be? A child of Abraham or a child of the promise? 
You got to be a child of the promise, which means that you are a part of that Abrahamic covenant, uh, that you're a part of the covenant with God, and he's, we're under the covenant of grace now, that you have to have that covenant relationship uh, with God. And it's telling us, and Paul's telling the Romans here, clearly, you do not have to be a direct descendant of Abraham to be a part of God's people. You just have to have that same covenant relationship, and you have to surrender yourself to God. Now, we understand as Paul goes into the same book in Romans, and he's talking in Romans chapter 10, he tells them how to be saved. And I don't put this in your, in your notes. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, uh, he says that if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Okay? Um, that is uh, what you and I have to do uh, to, to be saved. When, when Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, who was Nicodemus? He was a Jew. He was more than that. He was a Pharisee. And what's a Pharisee do? They're a teacher. He sat right here on these steps. I've seen it Sunday. All right? Jesus and Nicodemus. And in John chapter 3, verses 1 through 5, this is a part of their conversation. Listen to it. This is not Jesus talking to a Gentile. If you think that there's a special place, a special track that Jews get to go, this is Jesus instructing a Jew at what they would have to do to make it to heaven. And verse 1 says, Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. I'm reading one wall. Right. He came to Jesus that night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you were doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How many people does no one include? It's nobody. Zero. It includes Everybody. Nobody can do it, right? I mean, y'all reading what I'm reading? I, mean, I just want to be clear. Okay. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Good question. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Okay, so that's what he told Nicodemus. We know through the Bible teaching that what it takes to be saved, what we're supposed to do again, as I said, Paul said in Romans 10, confessing with your mouth, believing in your heart. We understand from the book of Ephesians in chapter 1 that when we believe, when we first heard the gospel message, that we received the Holy Spirit, which is a deposit, uh, we're sealed uh, by the Holy Spirit, which is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance. And, and you understand that that's how we today become and how Jews today become a part of the promise when we're saved. But saved is not just that you came down to an altar and you, you bowed down and you said, Oh God, I, I, I want some fire insurance. I want to get out of going to hell. You know, please, you know, change, you know, save me. And then you get up and you live like you want to. That you, when you're a child of the promise, you live like that. And if you don't, and then you're playing with fire. You're thinking, well, you know, hey, I, I'm, I'm saved, and, and you're not really. Because we, we can be cut off, and this cut off is not those people that are saved. He's not, oh, people will read that and say, well, if you're saved, you're going to be able to get cut off. Were the Jews, because they were following the law, guaranteed that they were going to heaven? The Bible says uh, that the blood of bulls and goats could never. What? Take away sin. It always had to be uh, that there was something deeper in their heart than the fact that they come up there and slit the throat of an animal, spilled its blood out, and cooked it and ate it. It had to be a heart condition if, that they were going through. You couldn't just go up. And, and what did Jesus tell uh, that, that rich young ruler? Uh, he said, that rich young ruler said, I have kept all the commandments. I, I have checked every box of the law. Is what he was saying. What did Jesus tell him to do? Go and sell all you have and give to the poor. Then you'll be saved. And what did he do? He had, this is a man who had kept, checked every box now. And if, and if salvation was about our works, then Jesus would have said, well, hey, good job, buddy. You got it. 
But Jesus told him to go do something that would require a heart condition. Go, trust me, really, go sell everything you got and give it away. And he couldn't do it. And what he said was, well, look at, look at all this. Thing. Oh, my gosh. I'd lose all of these things. Uh, so for you and I to be children uh, and for the Jews uh, and for anybody else on the entire planet, which I think when I mean you and I, I'm talking about Gentiles, uh, it's all of us that we have to be born again uh, to be these children of the promise. Now, take a look at Romans. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, I think the Bible is extremely clear that we only get there through through Jesus, and it says it in a tremendous amount of ways. Um, and and Paul warned in Romans uh, eleven, looking really at the second part of cha- uh, the, of the of the verse here, he says, uh, "Do not be uh, arrogant, but tremble." Verse 21, for if God did not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. Uh, So uh, uh, just reminding you of that, that we need to take our adoption seriously and do everything that we can to make God proud uh, by being his hands and being his feet uh, in the world. And as we watch these prophecies uh, unfold uh, before our eyes, we're going to be seeing a lot of prophecies being fulfilled that are going to be, again, for the Jews. We're going to see things happen in Israel, not happening in America. You know, if we're looking for everything, you know, when the Scripture says in Chronicles, for if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, I will heal their land and I hear their prayer, all that. Do you know who that's talking to? He's talking to us. It is a specific promise to the Jews. Now, we quote it for ourselves all the time. Does it have applicability to us? Maybe. Because it is true that if we'll get back to following God, then we'll be able, he, he will bless us. But that specific, quoting that to God, saying, you promised us if we would do this, he'll say, I didn't write that to you. Did it have your name at the top of the letter? I mean, that's like going to get a letter that, you know, somebody wrote to Brenda and me reading it like it's mine. You know? Uh, But you can say, well, if I did the same thing, would I get the same result? Well, probably. So it's not bad that we quote some of this stuff, but it does get very difficult for us when you're reading and you're studying prophecy and you start applying stuff that's for Israel, that's for the Jews, and you start acting like that's for America. That's what neo-Nazis do. That's what a lot of people do. A lot, a lot, a lot of people. That's, that's, that's what lots of pastors that are not studying God's Word and, and people that are setting up teaching. And when you put any scripture on a coffee mug, it just ain't big enough. You need the whole context. I hated tonight to only put, I wanted us to look at the whole chapter 11, whole chapter 9. I put these out here for you and because there's a lot more above it and after it uh, for you to be able to read. But you cannot at all understand biblical prophecy if you do not separate what's taking place for God's chosen people when it's, t- when it's talking about specifically ethnic Jews and then God's chosen people, how those things apply to us as children of the promise. Uh, all right, and, 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 and it is different uh, in the scripture when we read it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, one thing that came to my mind, and I gotta, it's gotta come back. I'm looking at my notes. Yeah, so we're in the time of the Gentiles right now. The Bible tells us when the time of the Gentiles is over, Okay, Uh, and it does seem like we are running out of steam in the time of the Gentiles. As I told you Sunday, we had this ark coming up. We did really well, okay? The Gentiles did really well. We have evangelized this world, okay? Uh, Not not every bit of it, you know, yet, but we have went out, but we, we hit a peak, and we're on this decline coming down the, the, the other side where we're, we're stopping Europe where, every, where everything really was bustling uh, there uh, with, with the Catholic Church and the Roman 
uh, popes and all of them and the crusades and things that they that they had. But when you are when you're reading uh, the Bible, uh, like I say, understand that things that apply to you and I uh, that are promises of God. Uh, about how he's going to take care of us and how if we act this way then he's going to do this or if we act another way he's going to do that. All that applies to us the same. Um, but the stuff in the end times is going to take place geographically in, in Israel and it is for the Jews. Again uh, the 144,000 witnesses that are going to go out, the two witnesses that are going to be there. Uh, these things are there to scream out at his people the Jews to get them to come back. And we don't need to look at that in a way that we say, well, look how he's paying special attention to those. He's paying special attention to us right now. But he's just not going to let them go. He's not going to just give up on them. And that's wonderful that he doesn't give up uh, on them. But last but not least, uh, there, there is a, a, a realm of Bible teaching uh, I shouldn't say Bible teaching. There's a realm of, of teaching uh, that people teach from pulpits that's called replacement theology. It is a lie. Okay? It's a lie. And that replacement theology says that every promise that God made to the Jews is now given to the church, and the church has effectively replaced the Jews as God's chosen people. Now, Paul is specifically writing to Romans who are pretty much the majority of the people he's writing to are Gentiles. He's, he's talking to them there in, in those chapters. He's saying, writing to you the Gentiles. And he is telling them that God has a place for the Jews. If you believe that somehow these things that have happened, that we have replaced the Jews in God's eyes then you would have put our, our little Gentile selves uh, too high, all right? Uh, he has that specific place. But again, that's not about salvation. It's just he's not giving up on them. And, uh, and uh, has he ever given up on you? And he's not going to give up on them. And I love the fact that, yes, he had them. They were his chosen people. But when they didn't do right, he looked at us and he says, you're going to have your shot. And you're going to go out there and do it. And if we had have said no, then he would have went to somebody else. He would have got a, a bunch of donkeys to go out there uh, and spread, spread the word if that's what he had to, if that's what he had to do. And, and that's why I tell you folks, for me, I'm amazed at God sometimes. Why would he use me? Why would he, why would he use a wretched person like me? And just so I make sure y'all stay humble, a wretched person like you too. Why would he use us? Why would he allow us even one opportunity to lead somebody to him? Isn't that amazing that he uses us? Isn't that humbling that he does? We're not the, the, the chosen people. We're not even good in our own right. But yet he, is, he, he chooses to use us. And I don't get puffed up and think, God, you need me. No, no, no. He can replace me like that cut me right off, have somebody grafted in about 1.2 milliseconds. All right. Uh, and so I'm thankful, as you said a while ago. I don't get picky, just thankful for what he has done. But I just want you to understand this as you read the Bible. Take a look at it. Think about it sometimes when it's saying that. Who's he talking to? Who's the audience right there? Get that context first at what the original meaning was for. And then ask yourself, does that apply to you and I today and a lot of it does but not all of it does okay uh, and you need to study the Bible like that uh, all the time let's pray Father God I do praise you and I thank you Lord uh, that right now the Lord that every single one of us that's in here uh, Lord then and I believe that all of us are Gentiles Lord none of us are descendants of Abraham uh, Father and we're we're not uh, ethnic Jews Lord and we don't have that lineage and Lord, I thank you uh, so much, that, Father, that we can stand here, we can sit here tonight, and we can say that we are the people of God. And we can do that because, Lord, that we are children of the promise, and that we have surrendered our hearts and lives to you, and that, Father, that you have just, by the virtue of your grace, that you have extended us a privilege 
to be the vehicle by which that you take your word to the wider world today. But Father, that it's not that we should throw away, because you haven't thrown away the Jews, and neither should we. But Lord, we should be praying for the Jewish people. Lord, we should be uh, really keeping our eyes on the nation of Israel, uh, Father God, uh, because you have mighty plans uh, for the people, for that nation, Lord. There's so many prophecies yet to be fulfilled, uh, Lord. Many of them are going to be fulfilled, Lord, when we're gone, because you're going to rapture the church, uh, Father God, and things are going to be fulfilled through that great tribulation, uh, Lord, and through the millennial reign that we'll be able to come back and reign with you. Uh, Father, so we're going to be able to see it take place, uh, Lord, but just what a wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, truth that there is, Father, how you do not give up on people. And Lord, even though you may set us aside for a little while, even though you'll let us uh, be like the prodigal son, you'll let us go our way for a, a long time, Lord, you always are there with the door open anytime that we want to repent and we want to come back. Lord, you're always going to uh, uh, allow us that opportunity, Lord, as long as there's breath in our bodies. And Father, so we pray uh, for the people all over this world today that do not know you, uh, Father, those people that are in our families, Lord, they wouldn't worry about whether they have any kind of lineage, whether they are born from a Christian home or born from a Jewish home or, or any of that, Father God, that they'll realize that individually that every single one of us has to stand before you and give an account of what we've said and what we've done. And Father, I pray that people would surrender their hearts and lives to you and be born again uh, through your son, Jesus Christ. Use us as instruments of your will, Father God, uh, to go out and fulfill the mandate that you've given us, Lord, to tell others about your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray that you would bless everyone that is here, uh, Lord, and to help us every day to serve you to the best of our ability. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.